Hi everyone, Jason here with another Makera Cam example project. And in this one, we're looking at how to machine a brass 3D relief coin through one of our spring and Easter theme example projects from spring 2025. First, you can grab any of the files you need for this project from the Makera Wiki site. If you head over to the knowledge sharing page, here's where you can find all the different files that you might need, not only for this project, but any of our example projects. And specifically for this 3D coin that we're creating, you can download the Oval Profile DXF, as well as the Rabbit Brass Relief STL file in order to design this project on your own. Or you can of course grab the actual Rabbit Brass Relief MKC file for a completed Makera Cam file that we'll be creating through this tutorial. Once you've launched Makera Cam, create a new three axis project. And the first thing that we wanna do is adjust our stock to match the material that we'll be using accordingly. So I'm gonna edit my stock over here and I'm gonna be using a brass piece of material that's going to be 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters by three millimeters. So I can adjust my stock like so. And then the next thing we wanna do is import our design file. So I'm going to first select the brass relief STL file and bring that into our design document. And once you've imported your model, you might notice that it's not facing the right way or even the right size, but we can use the transform tools to adjust this pretty easily. So first I'm going to rotate this part so it's oriented correctly with my stock. And after flipping, we can scale. And I'm gonna set my length of this to be 37 millimeters, okay? And I have link X, Y, Z on here, right? So that's automatically scaled my, my length, my width, and my height, which now fits really well within my stock, which is great. But then I'm going to unlink X, Y, Z and set my height to be three millimeters. So that'll actually pull the relief up a little bit. So we've scaled it proportionally for X and Y, and then we've unproportionally pulled the Z a little bit for our relief. Okay, now let's head over to move in our transform tools. I'm gonna to use a quick align stock just to center it in the stock in all the axes, then manually reposition this a little bit to be over here closer to my origin positions using the transform tool there. Next, let's import the second part of this design. So I'm gonna import that oval profile, which is a 2D path. And for this one, we could just use the transform tool to move this so it's over our coin. And it's not going to match the relief perfectly. It will match the second, another one of our spring projects together. So this will match the egg carving we have for the fourth axis really well. So I'm just going to center this within my relief like so, and that will match the egg carving uh, that we're creating in another one of our tutorials that you can check out on our site. So here we go, we have our STL imported, we have our DXF imported, and now we can move into creating our toolpaths. So the first toolpath we're gonna create will be a roughing pass for the relief. So let's select the STL, and then we can create a 3D relief toolpath. We don't need to make any changes to the default cutting depths or safe positions, but we do wanna select the correct bit that we'll be working with here. So I'm gonna delete the bit that's in here, which is from a previous project, and instead add a single flute bit for metal that's 1.5 by six millimeters. And you'll notice after selecting this bit, brass will automatically be selected as are my cutting parameters based on the stock that we've chosen earlier. Now, the default parameters are probably fine for most circumstances that you're going with. One thing that you might wanna to look to adjust is the step downs. Because this is gonna be our first pass on the stock, we absolutely wanna enable step downs. What step down does is it chooses how much material is removed per pass. And I'm actually gonna step this up to be 0.1 to make it a little bit more aggressive of a step down for this size bit with this softer material. Something else you might wanna to choose to adjust is your tool number. So we can set the tool number to match either the, the, the order that we're gonna use it. So for example, I might use this tool first, so I'll set this to be tool one, or to match the Carvera's automatic tool changer if you're using the Carvera for this project. We also wanna enable a height of 0.2 for depth allowance, which will prevent this larger bit from getting too close to the intricacies of our design. Now for our processing limit boundary, instead of saying model boundary, which would be the outside of this entire STL, or material boundary, which would be the outside of our entire stock, we're gonna say selected vectors and we can select our imported DXF. So that means we're only gonna machine within this vector window as our boundary box here. We do wanna make sure that our 
Uh, tool containment is set to be the outside boundary, so that way the tool can work all the way around this boundary and machine the entirety of everything that's in this selected vector. And we also enable ramping. And we can set a ramping distance of 10 millimeters with an angle of 20 degrees and a start height of one before calculating this toolpath. So there we go. So that is the roughing pass of this. And you can see that our large bits coming in here and machining quite a bit of material within the, the selected vector that we've created here, right? So then we can close this, and with my STL still selected, I'm going to create another 3D relief, but this one will be for a finishing pass, and we'll have some slightly different parameters. Again, we won't adjust anything for cutting depth or safe positions, but let's switch our tool. So I'm going to select a new tool, which will be a single flute engraving bit for metal, and I'm gonna select the 0.2 by 30 degree engraving bit that comes in our examples toolkit. Again, seeing that brass is selected as our cutting parameters. And this time around, I don't need a step down because we've already removed quite a bit of material in our roughing pass, um, but I might want to change my tool number if needed. And I also don't want any depth allowance. So I'm going to set that to be zero. So this engraving bit will now come right to the surface of our design. We'll use selected vector again as our processing boundary, just like we did before. And this time around, we're going to say, on boundary as our tool containment, and this will prevent the V-bit from machining any areas that might not have been previously machined. Lastly, we can enable ramping with the same settings that we used before and calculate this toolpath. Now you can see we get much closer to our design as we carve our design through our intricacies here. All right, and the last toolpath we'll need to machine this part is actually cutting it out of the stock. And for that, we're just gonna create a 2D contour. So I've made a 2D contour toolpath, and I'm going to select my DXF outline here, this perimeter. And sometimes it'd be a little difficult to select it, so you can either hide your paths when you're not using them, or you can always right click on the layer and click Select Graphics to make sure you've selected the line that you're looking to work with there, okay? Our start depth can be zero, which will be the top of our stock. Our end depth will be not only the depth of our stock, but a little bit past it to make sure we cut all the way through. So for example, 3.5 millimeters, half a millimeter past my three millimeter stock as we go. Then we can choose a tool. And for this, I'm gonna use the same 1.5 by six millimeter bit that we used earlier, which is uh, set to brass, of course, as we go. I'm again going to up my step downs just a little bit to 0.1, which should work fine for this tool and this material. And I'm gonna reassign this to be the same number that I used earlier, which was tool one. So that way I can signify I'm using the same tool or using the same tool in the same slot. For our strategy, we wanna make sure that we're using an outside strategy. So the tool will run around the outside of this perimeter to keep the, uh, the, the design that we've machined um, un untouched with the cutting process. And we'll enable ramping with the same settings that we had earlier, a distance of 10, an angle of 20, and a start height of one. The last thing we have to do is enable tabs. So when this part is cut out of the stock, it will break free. And we don't want that to move around or vibrate or project out of the machine or anything like that. So we're gonna use tabs, which will hold it in place during the machining process. And you can customize your tab shape. I'll use triangle for this, because it usually works pretty well with metal. And I'm gonna set this tab width to be five millimeters and a thickness of one. I can then press add and select a couple different areas on my outline. So I'm gonna select and draw four tabs around the perimeter of this coin, and then click Calculate to calculate this toolpath. All right, and if I just hide my STL here, we can see that we are machining down, but you can also see that the tab area is not cut out, this V-shape or triangular-shaped tab as we go. Perfect. So there is our toolpath, so I'll close this window. And the next thing to do is we can right click path and save all these paths to export them as a G code file. And in the newer version of Make Carrot Camp, you can choose to change your tool number here. This is also a good time to check to make sure you've assigned the right tool numbers before clicking export and saving this as a G code file. But before we begin to manufacture the design, we must load our stock. Our piece of brass can be loaded onto the wasteboard placed on the bed of our Carvera Air using the corner clamps and a few top clamps as shown. Then in the Makeara Controller app, we can select and upload our project files that we exported as a G-code file to our machine. After uploading, we can select the file that we wanna work with and preview the G-code file and the toolpaths in the controller app. 
Next, in the config and run window, we can configure this project. And if you need to, you can change your work origin offsets. For example, I'm going to offset a distance of five in the X and Y directions to move my part a little bit away from the corner clamp here as we're machining it. We also enable scan margin, which will trace the perimeter of our part to confirm its location before machining. Auto Z Pro, which will be used to measure the height of the stock. And for a rough cut piece of material like brass, we also might want to enable auto leveling, which will probe the surface in multiple locations to compensate for any deviations in the stock while machining. But I don't need this many probing points, so I'm going to adjust this to have a clearance height of two and then three probing points in the X and Y directions. Once set, we can click run to start to manufacture. After the machine completes the scan margin, Z probe, and auto leveling sequence discussed earlier, the Carvera Air will prompt us to load Tool 1, while the Carvera will select this tool automatically. After loading Tool 1, which is the 1.5 by 6 mm end mill, into the Carvera Air using the Quick Tool Changer, we can press the button on the top of the machine to continue. First, the roughing pass will be machined to begin to carve the relief into our brass stock using this larger bit. When machining soft materials like this, you can choose to use the dust shoe and the vacuum, or instead use an air assist system for chip evacuation and cooling. Once the roughing pass is complete, we'll be prompted to load our next tool, the 0.2 mm engraving bit, before continuing to machine the finishing pass of the relief. Less material will be removed as the first pass did much of the work, but here's where we will really begin to see the design come to life as the V-bit carves all of the detail in our design through this finishing pass. Once this is finished, we'll be prompted to load the 1.5 mm end mill again to machine the outer contour toolpath to cut this part out of the stock. After cutting the tabs, you can use sandpaper or a file to clean up the edges of the part. You might also want to consider using a polishing wheel to polish the surface of the part and bring out the best result. And that's all there is to it. This type of project takes advantage of the Carvera and Carvera Air's ability to machine high detail in metals and other materials to create keepsakes like this one. Check out our other two tutorials for our Easter and Spring themed projects on the Makeara channel. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe.